Hi and welcome to this episode of the next batch. Today in this video we will try to revive this old yeast. When you brew your own beer everything doesn't always go as planned. This summer I was planning to brew a Belgian beer but something came up and the yeast that I bought was just lying in the refrigerator and I did not have time to make that batch. So now the yeast has expired on the date uh, three months ago. So instead of uh, throwing the yeast in the trash and buy a new package, you can uh, make a reviving starter. And that's what I'm going to do today. Here I have my equipment set up for everything that we need. When the yeast is old, it's important to not use a too high original gravity on the wort. So in this case I will use a gravity of 1036 and that equals one liter of water. And 100 grams of DME. We only make a one liter starter because of the old yeast. Pouring such an old yeast into a say four liter starter would be too much for the yeast. So that was one liter of water and now I put the kettle on the scale, reset the scale and weigh up 100 grams of DME. Okay, 102. Okay, once that's weighed up, let's put it on the induction heater. Let's turn it on, full power. And uh, now it's important to stir so that the DME doesn't stick to the bottom of the kettle. This step is not really necessary on a small starter like this, but I use a little drop of anti-foam to prevent this from boiling over. You can see that foam just disappeared. <laughs> While that's heating up, I'm taking some yeast nutrients and stirring it out in this little glass. Maybe this much. Let's clear this away. I have a little bit of water in the yeast nutrients, so it will mix out uh, more easily. And I'll just keep it here until it starts boiling. Okay, now it started to boil. I'll turn down the heat and it will now boil for uh, 10 minutes, but first I have to pour in these nutrients. We're going to use this two liter Erlmeyer flask today. And to sanitize it, I heat up a little bit of water on this old uh, heater. So uh, the water will sanitize the flask. And while uh, this uh, boils and heats up, I. Uh, <laughs> I have this habit of doing this with the, the packages. We have to make sure the uh, contents uh, gets mixed uh, properly. You can see in this little window, the contents. It looks, looks a bit strange. It's more grayish than uh, it normally looks like. And then I just lay it on uh, my counter here, so it gets uh, up to room temperature. Now this has been boiling for a few minutes. And I think it's now safe to use. The water has, uh, the boiling water has sanitized it. So I'll just pour this out in my sink. Oops, forgot about the magnet. 
in with it. Okay, since I forgot about the magnet and it went into the sink, I don't feel that magnet is safe anymore. So I'll just do this and boil everything here for a few minutes. Now the wort has been boiling for a total time of 10 minutes and I'll take some aluminum foil. Uh, let's turn off the heat. Like that. And let's chill it down to room temperature in the sink. And then we'll take it and put it in the water. Now it will chill down in the water. It's been like an hour or so or, and the wort has chilled down. So now I'm placing it on my stirrer. And let's pick out the yeast. One more round of this uh, mixing uh, it up inside its bag. And we need some uh, star sand. I always put the bag in my star sand solution. Okay. It's important to uh, sanitize the yeast package before cutting it open. It's a bit tricky to get the inner bag out. So I'll carefully use my scissors. Cut open. Okay, so here we have it. You can see it's a bit, uh, you can see some dots, yeast uh, cell dots. And then I'll pour it in. And then start start the stirrer and a little less action on the stirring and I'll place it loosely on top of the flask okay a little less action we have a nice uh, speed on the stir and I'll keep it here until I uh, first see uh, some action in the yeast. It might take a day or two with this uh, old uh, yeast to see some action. It's just a waiting game. <laughs> so let's wait and get back when something has started to happen. Now it's been 24 hours since we pitched the yeast. And we can see that there is some change. The color on the wart is a bit lighter and we can see a little bit of white. This is uh, proof of activity from the yeast. Let's give it a few more hours. So now a few more hours has passed and I think it's time to see if it's uh, ready. Uh, so first I'll just press the aluminum foil around the neck and I turn off the stirrer and now I'll let it sit in room temperature on the stirrer when the stirrer stirs the little hat is uh, loosely fit to the neck oxygen will get sucked in and the yeast have uh, the aerobic process but when you tighten it the oxygen in the flask will be used up and the yeast will get over to the anaerobic phase. So let's let it sit overnight. And now it's been sitting on the stirrer overnight in room temperature. And we can see that uh, the wort is clearer on top and there's that there's a layer on the bottom of the flask. That layer is our yeast and it's beer on top. So the yeast is obviously uh, finished uh, its job on uh, fermenting the wort and to make it flocculate uh, even more. That means gathering all the particles on the bottom of the flask. I will put it in one of my refrigerators and then I will harvest it tomorrow. Then 
It's been a couple of days since uh, I put this in my refrigerator and I just took it out. And now we can see the yeast has flocculated on the bottom of the flask. If I was gonna brew with this yeast now, then I could just use this yeast for my next yeast starter. So since I'm not gonna use this yeast for a couple of months, I will put this into this. But uh, the volume here is bigger than here. So I will like, decant some of this to make space for all the yeast in this. First, I need to start sand. This is almost a liter, so I will just pour out some of this and the rest will go in this flask. And now it's uh, good to have a good aim. And I have to do this to loosen out the yeast from the bottom. So there we have everything in this flask, tighten the lid and I will uh, write on this little label uh, mark what type of yeast this is. 5.30 and the date for today. And now I will put this in my refrigerator alongside all my other yeast flasks. And this way I can see what type of yeast it is and which date I put it in. The shelf life when I do this is uh, at least six months and I've been storing yeast this uh, way uh, for up to one year. But when you're uh, gonna use the yeast, you have to make yeast starter. You cannot just pour one year old yeast right into your wort. So this is a nice way to contain your yeasts. And uh, when I put it in the refrigerator, a few hours later, you can see the um, it starts to clear up on top and the yeast cells will collect on the bottom. So that's how you do that. Thanks for watching this episode of the next batch. See you again next time. You can see the white uh, activity up here. I feel white activity up here.